Hey guys, welcome to my Etsy channel where my primary objective is to help you build a thriving Etsy business. On today's video, I'm going to be doing a Etsy shop critique. So if you are interested in learning more about how you could improve your shop, this is a great way to kind of learn from a different shop the do's and don'ts. That way you can improve your shop overall as well. So let's go ahead and get started on this video. I'm doing a critique on the store called Eyes on B. So thank you, um, Brittany, for allowing me, or Brittany, I'm sorry, for allowing me to do a review of your beautiful shop. So let's go ahead and get started. So keep in mind, guys, that any tools that I currently use or talk about, I'm going to leave a link below. Um, on this video, there's a text box. You click there and you have all the links to all the resources that I currently use to do this video, plus additional resources for you guys. So let's go ahead and get started. The first thing I do is I pick a listing. So I actually pick this listing right here. And the first thing I always talk about is product photography. And product photography is very important when you are selling in the e-commerce platform. And the reason why, or the main reason why, is because when you sell an e-commerce platform, the customer can grab the item, can view it in person, can wear it or use it or touch the texture. So your photos is everything, right? That's that's first impressions. That's what they have to see if they really want to buy the product or they're going to keep scrolling and pass your product. So you want to make sure that your photo is compelling you want to make sure that your photo is cropped in a complementary way. You want to make sure that there's no distractions. You also want to make sure that you are targeting to both potential buyers. You're going to have the buyer that you know, saw your product, wasn't really looking for it, saw your product, fell in love with it, and wants it. And you're going to have the buyer that was looking for your product, saw it, and fell in love with it as well. So you're kind of marketing for both aspects. Now, with this photo, what I see is, to be completely honest, it can be quite confusing um, having the, the, I guess this is like a thumb to put the actual dangle on. I don't know. It's not actually me. You see, that's why I'm confused. So this is an arm. I thought this whole time this was a ring, but it's a bangle. So, okay, I see it now. So this is where it gets confusing, right? Because when you look at it this way, it, it sort of looks like a ring. And then when you look at it here, you don't know what you're looking at. I don't know if I'm looking at the bangle or if I'm looking at this hand. It's kind of weird. And then it's cropped. And it is cropped. The hand is cropped out. So you really can't tell what it is. Here it looks like, you know, like I guess a, a pole or something with the bangle on it. This one actually looks way better. And this one looks way better as well. Um, if I had to pick any of these photos to kind of change them around, I would do these two. I would do this one, the first one, and then I would do this one second. Because this one, you could see the whole arm and you could kind of tell what it is. And this one for second, so you could have like a close-up. This here, um, the picture, you could see what it is. It's just, it's hard to tell what you're buying. That's the problem, I feel. So what I would do is I would do some research. And I would look at high top shops on Etsy that sell the same thing or similar like yourself. So I would do research on, on shops that sell bangles and kind of see how they're doing it. And I'm not talking about like regular shops. I'm talking about like the ones that sell a lot and kind of copy their style and create your own and make it 20 times better if you can. Um, I will avoid having like something like this on the background that's distracting and you don't know what you're looking at, whether you're looking at this thing or if you're looking at the actual bangle um so that's my suggestion your photos do need to be changed um if i were you if i were you i would just do the photos completely brand new i would go get inspired look at different shops see kind of what they're doing and then kind of go from there um you could just put on um, copper bangle on Etsy and kind of just look at what other people are doing something like this would be more simple and subtle and it's nicer in my opinion um, so doing something like this is really pretty. You see how she, just, they just have like a natural wood in the background. They have the copper on the top. Um, uh, maybe a picture like that on the side with the, with the bangle on. 
but stuff like this is more it, it, it looks more appealing for the buyer versus how you have it right now so this is the first step it's just looking at other people's photo and don't get overwhelmed i know that in the beginning as a new Etsy seller, we have to learn so many things and product photography is one of them. And it's just one of those that, oh my God, just takes time to like craft and learn how to do it the proper way. Um, I also recommend buying a light box. I don't know if you ever heard what a, um, or seen a light box, but basically it's a little box that has like lights inside of it. And what the light box does is that when you take a picture, um, it'll give you that nice, um, white clear background so therefore um i can't find it so therefore your photos are really nice and clear and you just put the bangle on the actual light box and this is a light box right here you see so you put the product in here so you will put the bangle there and then you can just take a picture from your regular camera like this one here or from your actual phone and that's it and your pictures will be 20 times better just from doing that um, and it's a simple solution. You could buy one for like $30 on Amazon. They have like other ones that are a little bit more um, fancier. But this is what technically what you do is you put it like that. You put the product in there. You take a picture of it. And it comes out so much better. Nice, clear, no shadows. Um, and it's, it's, it's going to make your shop stand out. So I definitely will work on the photo for sure. Um, keep in mind that. A bad photo could prevent you from getting a sale, no matter how amazing your product is. So you could have an amazing product, right? But because your photo is not the best, um, you sacrifice the sale, basically. So that that will be my my um, take on you doing this again on your photos. The second thing I want to talk about is SEO. So SEO stands for Search Engine Optimization. And it's how the search engine talks to Google and they know that this page is about a wire, a copper wire bangle. And based on different metrics like um, page, on page factors and off page factors, and based on the keywords that you pick and based where you put the keywords at, the history of the listing, the history of your shop, your social signals, like are people sharing your stuff? Are people liking your stuff? Based on all that, it contributes to where you're actual picture or actual listing will rank on XC search results and also on Google search results, Yahoo, and etc. Um, so you definitely want to work on your keywords. I saw that you're not using all 13 keywords and you're leaving potential customers because what happens is that the more keywords that you use, which ultimately you want to use all 13, but the, the more keywords you, you use, the more you maximize yourself in getting found and people finding you. So you definitely want to work on having um, all keywords. You don't want to just do five or six and call it a day. You want to work on having all keywords. So my first suggestion for you is to use a program called XE Rank. If not, you could use any program out there. There's Keyword Planner. There's Marmalade. Um, a lot of them are free unless you pay for like the pro features. You could just use the free one, which is like how I do it. But I recommend redoing your um, your keywords. For instance, um, you're using keywords that are oversaturated. So therefore, you don't have a competitive, like you can't compete. If you were to type in cop copper bracelet on xc.com, right? Let's go there. You are competing right now with 94,000 people that are using the same keyword. So therefore, um, if you try to rank organically, it's it's going to be very hard for you to rank organically. Most likely, um, you're going to be buried um, on the bottom of the XC search results. Um, so we're down here, which is a lot of pages, right? People normally shop on the first, maybe on the second page of XC, right? Or whenever we're doing any type of search. But we might not go all the way to the page 50 or 51. So if you're all the way down there, no one's seeing your listing, basically. You're buried, right? So you don't want to use keywords like that. Another bad thing of using a keyword like that is that when you do run a XC ad, or if you were to run a, a regular ad somewhere else like Facebook or Google AdWords or Instagram, you're always going to pay a little bit more when there's a lot of competition using that part a particular keyword because of the reason that everyone's trying to compete on the first page of XC or on the fa first page, let's say, of Google. 
So therefore, you're going to you're going to be charged a lot more in order to compete with everyone else. So my recommendation would be to go back, um, do your SEO completely all over. Um, you want to make sure that you're looking for keywords that are describing your item, but not too broad in the sense that now you're targeting anybody and everybody. And then you also want to use keywords that are not too oversaturated in the sense that there's 91 listings competing with you. See what I'm saying? So if you were to use a particular keyword that you really, really, really want to rank for, you could do that. But just keep in mind that your marketing um, aspect of it, you will need to market your product a lot. You will need to spend a lot of money in advertising in order to win that keyword over. Uh, So that means that you will have to work a little bit harder on that particular listing in order to rank for those particular keywords that are oversaturated that you're trying to win over or get, you know, found, found by. Um, so first of all, um, I would do all of them with the exception of maybe copper bangle. That one is, I always try to stick under 11,000. I mean, I'm sorry, 10,000. It's a little bit over, but it's not too bad, but all of these, all the rest, they need to go because they're not doing you any favor. And then you also need to go ahead and make sure that when you are doing your SEO research, that you are looking for keywords um, that, des- like I said, describe your item and you want to do long tail keywords as well. And you want to make sure that you fill in all 13 keywords. Don't put seven or 10, do all 13 keywords. Therefore, you have a fighting chance of getting found in the search engine. That way you can increase your impressions, increase your reach, increase your views. And therefore, you have a more chance of increasing your sales as well. Once you do your research, right, and you and you get all new 13 keywords and you get rid of these that are not doing you any favor, what you have to do is almost like how you did it. You go in here, you put the main keyword right here, and then you put like a short description of what you're selling. You put the main keyword here as well. This is your meta description. This is what Google shows um, to the search results when somebody Googles you. So this is how it's going to look. It's like a preview snippet of what you're selling. So you want to make sure that your one, your keyword is there. That's a on-page SEO factor. And you want to make sure also that you write a compelling caption. That way people are compelled to click and buy. If it's not compelling, um, people are not going to want to click. So I definitely recommend changing it and keeping in mind that there's uh, 150 characters or less, or I think it's 155 characters or less. That way... When you finish it right here on the dot, it describes it accurately and you don't get cut off. Um, so yeah, you definitely need to work on your SEO. You don't even have um, your, your other keywords in your listing description because you don't have a long key, um, listing description. So you want to keep in mind that with SEO, you want to distribute your keywords in your listing description. That's another um, thing that you have to do. So Basically, you want to put your keyword in the title, you want to put your keyword in your meta description, and then you want to put the keywords throughout your listing description. This is how um, the search engine is going to find you and it's going to send you traffic, but you definitely need to work on your SEO. Um, Keep in mind that one of the biggest mistakes that we make as XE sellers, especially in the beginning, is that because XE is such a low cost to start, right? You don't really need that much under $100, you could start even, you don't even need $100, you could just start. The issue with that is that a lot of people don't take XE serious, right? You don't take it as a full business because one, maybe it's not an actual shop or a boutique, out, you know, somewhere that, that walking traffic will go to it, but you have to treat it as a real business. You have to be dedicated. You have to make sure that you um, take advantage of everything that XE gives you, all the features on how to how to properly create a listing. If you had your own shop, like your own website, and you added your products, it do, you're not going to, unless you know this already and you know SEO, you're not going to know that you need to add keywords. You're not going to know that you need a title. You're just going to probably just add the products and call it a day and then hope for the best, right? So XC actually gives you the tools and resources to, Hey, you need this and you need that and you need to make sure that you have keywords and all this extra stuff. So you have to make sure that you, you follow those, at least those key points, you know, even if you 
still starting and even if you're still trying to figure it out because then you're doing it the proper way at least in the sense that you're trying to learn right now the third thing i want to talk about after seo is your listing description and on your listing description you shouldn't include nothing else besides your listing description or matching items and listing description basically is going to help build credibility with customers is basically um you describe everything and anything about this listing. So you describe what you're selling, what they get, how to order, shipping, return policies. Um, you can also do a backlink to your to the main page of your homepage. That way, when they scroll down, they don't click on the back button and leave your page. But you definitely need to work on your listing description. You don't have any details on it. So therefore, um, if a person lands on your page and they happen to read your listing description, they might not buy from you because they don't really know, right, anything about it besides a short description of the actual product. So my recommendation is to craft a, I call it a killer listing description and basically include anything and everything the customer should know about this listing. The reason why you want to craft a listing description as well is not, o not only solely based on the customer, but also it's going to protect you in the future. So if you were in the future, I don't know, somebody opened a case against your shop and they said, well, that wasn't explained to me and you don't have it listed right in your listing description. Um, guess what? X is going to take, right? It's, it's going to favor the customer and you're going to have to get a re, you know, have to refund or, or cut on the shipping or whatever it is at that moment. But this is why it's so important that you um, fill out everything, every single cranny, everything, because it's going to protect you as the buyer and it's going to help the seller make a, a, a informed decision if they want to go ahead and proceed with the sale. So I would definitely work on redoing your listing description. It needs a lot of work and you need to make sure that you are detailed with what you're selling. So there's no confusion from the buyer's end. And the last thing I want to, I usually talk about is the curation of your shop and the curation of your shop is your branding colors, um, your logo, um, the cohesiveness of your listings, and so on. Um, so I do like your logo. Um, I think it's really cute, and I do like your um, your banner. Um, what I would do is in the future, if you were to do some research, um, look at the most prominent shops, and you'll notice that one thing that they have in common is that their banners have, um, all their banners have like the, their social media handles on it and they have like the hours of operation and they have like um, how to get reached, you know, or maybe they have like hashtags. That's something that is trending now and it's something that it will set you apart because you're cross promoting your products and then people will start following you there as well. So they're therefore, if they don't ever come back to Etsy, but you post something on Instagram um, they'll be able to see you there and follow you there. So they, that usually does drive traffic back to your shop. So I recommend doing that. Um, that way you have like brand awareness and that's, you know, branding one-on-one is just expanding your business to all the different platforms. So by you advertising your social media links, even though you might have them in your about me section, a lot of people don't know to go down here, right? A lot of people, um, are new to Etsy. There is their first time visiting. They don't really know that they could go on the bottom and read, right, more about the shop or, or learn where the links are at. So it's just another way to, it's another like call to action to tell people, hey, this is where I'm at. Or you could say, hey, um, if you're an Instagram, um, use the hashtag, whatever. It could be your store name if you wanted to. Eyes on B, hashtag eyes on B. And then that way when people um, look you up, right, they could find you and be like, oh, okay, that's that store. Let me, let me um hashtag them because I did buy a jewelry from them. In that way, that creates brand awareness, and it creates um more traffic to your shop, and then other people see your products as well. So I definitely will work on creating a a time banner that has more information on it. I like the fact that you have a a profile picture of yourself. You're very pretty. A profile picture of yourself because it showcases who you are. And it's important that people know who they're buying from. So that's really good. Um, do you actually have a logo that's really good? And then you have a really cute tagline. So that's good. And you have your location. 
um, you have it set up by category, so that's good. Um, your pictures, I will redo them again, of course. Um, the reason why is because you want to make sure that they're cohesive, they have the same colors. What I would do is that I would stick with a certain color or a certain pattern. So for instance, at the current moment, you have like this picture here, this picture here, and let's say this picture here. If I saw those four, those three pictures on Etsy search results, I wouldn't say they're all coming from your shop, right? Because they look like it's three different shops at the current moment. It doesn't have like um like a cohesive look to them. So what you want to do is you want to develop a cohesive look. And that takes time. So don't feel like like you know you can't do it. You could do it. You just have to do a little bit of research. You got to see what these top companies are doing. You could look at your local Target, you could look at Walmart, you could look at these huge high-end stores that make a lot of sales and you will see the trending that they have a particular background color for all their listings online, right? Or they have a particular um I don't know, mock-up that they use, right? So you want to make sure that you do that. This is how you're going to separate yourself from the millions and millions of shops that sell jewelry. This is how you're going to differentiate yourself. And remember, the more you do it, the more you get better at it. I mean, I know that when I started my Etsy shop, I thought my photos look great. Six months in, I'm like, oh, man, they don't look great. I fixed them six months in. Whoa, I thought they were better, but I could improve. And I keep doing that. Even to this day, um, I keep doing that. So therefore, don't feel like, you know, it's a one-time change and that's it. I mean, you're always going to grow and improve, especially on Etsy and especially on things that, you know, you're good at creating these, these beautiful items, but we're not, you know, it, your specialty is not photography or your specialty is not a, a Facebook cover. And I have links below to people that could create a Facebook cover for you. And what I would recommend is hiring. If you can't do your own photography or you're having a difficult time with it, hiring somebody and paying them to do your photography. The nice thing about having your own business is that you could write this off in your taxes. So therefore, you know, it will lower whatever taxes you owe. And that's going to be way better for you. And you have to invest in your business. You know, unfortunately, a lot of um, XC owners or just entrepreneurs in general don't want to spend more money. But for it, the game is you have to spend money to make money, right? Especially on things that you don't know how to do. And that way it saves you time. It saves you a headache. And then you could proceed in doing the stuff that you love to do, which is creating your products. So this is my overall review of your shop. Um, guys, I'm trying to create a sense of community. So if you guys have any tips um, for her, make sure you leave a comment below. Um, I think it's important that as an Etsy community, we come together, we help each other out. I think there's enough room for everyone to be successful on Etsy. So make sure that you please like, comment, and share this video for anyone out there that um, has an XC shop or thought about opening an XC shop. And until the next video, I'll see you guys later. Bye-bye.